Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to Tyler's Yarn. So we've got Brooke co-hosting with us today. Um, she's going to ask me a few questions on how we started our business. Howdy, howdy. All right, let's get started. All right, so didn't you want to do, like, our new segment? Yeah, because we're going to try, like, um, segment everything. So every bit of the show is going to be a different segment of every time. We're just trying to sort of figure out how we're going to do it, eh? Yeah, so what is the first segment? Um, so I think we're going to – every guest that we're going to have on, I'm, we're going to ask what's one good thing that's happened to you this week. All so right. One good thing that happened to me this week is um, Melbourne got out of lockdown. Well, kind of. Sort of. Nearly. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, one, yeah, one good thing that happened to me is now we're going to open the store this Saturday. i um, super excited for that because we've been closed for three months. So yeah. it'll be interesting see, to see who comes in this weekend because we haven't been open, which is good. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a lot of people in, which will be nice. Yeah. So sure. if you come by... On the weekend, say hi to Tyler. He'll be here. Yeah, I'll be there all weekend. Um, yeah. Awesome. Should we get into the qu- questions? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. So, um, I thought like I could ask a question that we get like a lot of. Yeah. And so I just went through Instagram, and the question is, um, advice for starting a new vintage company. Uh, so I thought we could explore that with you and talk about how you started Official Vintage. What was the original idea and the building blocks of, of the company? Yeah, so pretty much when we started, there wasn't really an original idea. It was just sort of like based off a hobby. Um, we're obviously traveling around the world, like picking clothes and that sort of stuff, especially because I, tw- I just turned 20 when we first started this company. So I was like... Four years ago. Yeah, four years ago. Five years ago Five. nearly. Old so, guy. <laughs> old, what an old fella. Yeah, so pretty much like before that, I was in like, did, did my gap, like gap year, obviously, it was in Tokyo. And then like, I was, went all through Europe and stuff like that. So I was picking clothes the whole time. It was just a hobby. And then obviously just sort of like started from there. Yeah, yeah. just started from traveling. And then how did you... So there wasn't really like a main idea or anything like that yeah. behind it. It was sort of just like winged it winged it <laughs> yeah, winged it at the start how did you get like how did you start building the idea of maybe starting a company though um I think I sort of just didn't want to work for anyone else yep. that's when I first started I didn't want to work for anyone else so I was just like oh let's try this business and we're sort of in the media age now we can sort of like start a business with anything at the yeah. moment it's easy but it's also yeah. really hard because there are so many businesses starting yeah, up they reckon it's like way more competitive now and stuff like that which is like all good but it's just sort of like all the information's out there yeah it's just like if you want to consume it or not like if you want to make good youtubes like you can research it you know what i mean yeah it just takes time obviously to hone in that craft or like build good content and stuff like that it's like you can learn all that stuff on youtube yeah you know what i mean so what was like so you what was the thing that turned you to start a company? The thing that turned me to start a company? Um, yeah, well, just before we were saying the lifeguard thing. But then I think when we sort of did the first few drops, we saw the company had legs. Yeah. So, like, we were selling out of our drops. Like, back then it was nothing because it was, like, maybe 10 items a drop on yep. our website. Yep. But we are selling out of them within, like, 10 minutes. So we are like, oh, this thing might have legs. And then we're just like... And just started. So you just started from putting some drops together. And yeah. Back then we were doing like drops one once a month or something like that. Yeah. And then we we're trying to get like enough stock to get it to the next drop in yeah. a month's time, which was only like 10 or 15 items back then, which is funny. Which is still like, I feel like that a lot of people who are starting a company, that's kind of where they are now. What would you... Like tell them what what were you going through when you were doing those ten drops a like every month? It wasn't even ten drops. It was um one drop every month of ten items. Oh yeah, well, so it was like back then it was crazy really, but I think how we did it is because we built up a good sort of customer base. Um, we built up like customer loyalty just because like we cared about our product we wash all up stuff we do all that sort of stuff do the stuff behind the scenes so we like build up a community that way which is good yeah awesome what would you have changed about 
how you started the company. So like what you've found out on your journey to right now. What have you found out now that you wish you knew then? Probably back then I reckon it was like didn't realise how much sort of hard work it was to start the company. We're like, oh, yeah, we'll just put a job together and it'll be easy. But then it's like, oh, now I need to do a drop a week and now we're doing drops every single day, I think. You don't realise how much work goes into all this sort of stuff. Yeah. But it's like definitely, yeah. But what would you, like, what would you change? So if you, from what you know now, oh, what, what would, would you I change? change? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Things I'll change would be... No, actually. I feel like there would be a lot you would change. <laughs> yeah, like just little things. Like at the start we were doing sort of photos um, with models, which took a lot a lot of time, that yeah. sort of stuff. Um, definitely at the start I reckon we would have um, built up a lot more sort of relationships. Yeah. Like we would have gone like around the world, got to the US, gone through Europe, just to sort of like get our name out there in the vintage community and like, like look at a whole lot of buyers and stuff like that. Yeah. Like just do the travel. Like that's a bit of money at the start, but then it would have been like paid off in the long run for yeah. the stock we we're sort of getting because we saw the people face to face. So you wish you knew you had like yeah. traveled more to get more stock, being more well known in the community of vintage, like all yeah. Because it probably took a year. Like I think it was a year before we went on our first like buy trip before we handpicked everything. Yeah. Which like changed the business completely. I think. Yeah. How do you think that changed the business? Like just because when you go handpick everything, you got no sort of excess stock because yeah. it's all your style, so it's going to sell regardless. And you can sort you start knowing what's easy sellers and what's hard sellers once you've been in the the game long enough. Do you think your style was not like as well received, or is that just from other people having a different? No, I think at this because. At the start, when you're getting boxes and stuff like that, yeah, like it wasn't really your style, yeah, like it was just random stuff. Okay, but I think when you handpick it, um, it's more your style. Yeah, it's more your style, but you start weaning off stuff that doesn't sell that well. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I might think that's super cool, but then someone might think that's like not cool not at cool, all. Yeah, so um, it's a bit like funny how vintage is because like fashion's subjective, so you can. You could yeah. like something and then I wouldn't like it, you know? That's like everything. Yeah. We, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. The so opposites. <laughs> the opposites of doom. So for, um, yeah, so you would just change that you would travel more That's and like get your name out there pretty yeah. much. And maybe explore a different style of clothing? Um, or no? No, I think like the style that we're in now, like 80s, 90s, like sort of vintage, like streetwear, is so where we've, was, we've always sort of want to be at. We, is that what you mean? Like Yeah, so it was all, like I was just wondering if you would ever go into like um, denim. and. Uh, no, I don't think we'll be sort of going that way, I reckon. I, I think we try would, for a little bit. Yeah, I think denim and stuff like jeans, like Carhartt and stuff would get into. Yeah. But your store has to be open consistently, which was our store was has been closed and locked down locked in and out so people can't yeah. come in and try the jeans on it's and true. when you're selling like jeans online you get a lot of returns so it's sort of like waste your time you know and because of the vintage sizing as well it's quite yeah. hard yeah and it's like you people don't really know what like i don't know 30 33 times whatever it is yeah, yeah fair enough um for someone who's listening to this and has like a passion for vintage what's a couple things you think they would need to know like maybe during their journey or at the start of their journey, what's a few things you think they would need to be prepared for? Yeah, like I was saying before, obviously it's going to be hard work. Um, it's not easy. Everything's super manual, so you have to, like, spend a lot of time on stuff. Why is that? Like, pretty much, like, um, like how do I say it? Say everything's super manual. You have to, like, put up one item, goes through a massive cycle, so we wash dry all that put it up say there's like 50 items in a drop yep and then we have to take photos of those and then build content for that stuff for the day yeah so it's just a whole lot of stuff like getting from the start of the day to the end of the day with one rack you know yeah trying to like um 
So yeah. be prepared for a lot of hard work is what you're saying. Yeah, <laughs> especially if you want staff and stuff like that. You've yep. got to be dropping a lot more stuff. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, that's sort of it. You just, just be prepared for the hard work. Yeah, it's hard work. And, like, make sure you have a good support system as well. Yeah. Like, have good friends around you. You're very, around you and yeah. then like your business partner like me and Stu get along so well so easy um we don't really fight too often <laughs> sometimes <laughs> go, go the yelling of doom sometimes but <laughs> no. yeah but I think what you said having a support system is yeah. is really good for you if you're starting a company like have have your family and friends around and have yeah. like your friends helping out like you have a lot of your friends always helping out yeah like, I think that's the way to go. Like, I had a good support system at the start. Like, like I was saying before, we're doing model shots and yeah. all my friends would be coming every single day to do model shots for us because that's how we're doing it at the start. What's something else that you would tell someone who's starting, maybe in the middle of their journey, they've got a few customers, they've got their stock that they want. What, what would you tell them to do? If they're in the middle of their journey? Yeah. Like, Let's say they were just selling out of their bedroom. What would you tell them to do? Do, you, do they have a website or anything? You ask me a lot of detailed yeah. questions. Um, <laughs> just, just so we get an idea they, of how like these people. Let's say they have a really effective Instagram. Oh yeah, so they're just selling on Instagram. Yep. So the first step, I'd be like website straight away because you want to be built, building traffic to your website and building up your email list. Yeah. You know, like that's sort of like one thing, and then like because you're you don't never know if Instagram's going to be around forever. forever or yeah whatever yeah. so it's just more safer if you have a website for yourself as well would you tell them to go out and get a store um that's probably one thing that we sort of stuffed up yeah yeah i think we we got a store way too early just because it was in a spot that me and Stu really wanted to be in yeah so we rushed the store like we opened the store and it was a huge success like a lot of people, massive lines and stuff like yeah. that when we first opened. Um, but I think it was just a bit too early because it was only me and Stu working there at the same at that, at that time. So we're trying to put like stuff on the website and trying to open the store like every single day as well, which was like way too hard. Yeah. But I think like that's another thing. Don't rush into like getting a store, like build up slow. So you start in the... Um, like start on your website and then like build up. I yeah. reckon. So just take your time, but get definitely get a website. Yeah, definitely get a website. I reckon there's only like so much you can sell on Depop for so long. Like I stay on those platforms when you're first starting Depop, Instagram, and stuff like yeah. that. But then start pushing people to your website. I there are the some. There are some big vintage companies who are just just Depop, just Depop, or just yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Which I was. There's a lot buy. of those bidding ones as well that do super well. I was gonna buy a pair of shoes from a company and they didn't have a website yeah. and it just deterred me from yeah. like buying them because I, I don't know some people just get like not trusted you know yeah nah, that's interesting that you would say get a website i i totally agree yeah i definitely agree because it's i think it's, it's just the way everything's going like make sure you get a website make sure you're all on all like social platforms and just like getting your name out there yeah what do you think like what do you think about your position where you are right now? Like, are you happy with it? Um, yeah, where do you think you're at right now? Where would you rate yourself? Yeah, I think we're in a good position. Um, we're definitely trying to build up a good, like, team community at the moment. Like, we're just trying to build up a good, um, solid foundation for our team and, like, make sure we all have structure and stuff like that. Yep. So, like, every morning we do a team meeting and everyone has a job to do. Yeah. It's just, like, building that up, which is, like, cool. I think that's, like, what I'm interested in, that, like, at the moment, yeah. which is cool. Just continue building. Yeah, continue building. So you're just, you're not happy, like, until you, you just keep going up. Yeah, just keep going much. up, I reckon. Fair enough. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, what does your future look like for Official Vintage? Like, how do you see things going in, say, five years? Like, where where are your goals for that? Um, in five years, well, definitely, like, more stores, obviously. Yep. I'm building up a good team and just like I would definitely want to be a lot more um, of a buyer. Yeah. So I want to be like traveling the world because we can sort of now because of the whatever the vaccine or whatever. Yeah. So it'll be like good to 
go traveling around the world and handpick everything like we used to before COVID happened. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, that's definitely something. And also going back to maybe that what you said, um, building a team. We'll yeah. Maybe go into that a bit more. Um, what do you mean by that? So yeah, we definitely want to build a team. Um, just like build good values in our team and build a solid foundation. So when we do have like 10, 20, 30 staff, yeah. it's easy. Like everyone can talk to each other. It's not like, you know what I mean? Everyone's friends. Yeah, so you want to build like a good – we've talked about this as well. You want to build like a really good community within the company. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And then like people have their own jobs like I was saying before. Like if you're a yeah. photographer – like maybe you're learning photography and we hire you or or whatever. Yeah. And then you go to school and then you might want a job when you sort of come back, you know? Yeah. So and, like, then, and you want to have that company where people are able to go out, excel in their skill mm. and then come back. I think that's really, that's like... Because everyone should be doing their own stuff on their side as well. Yeah. I think you that's know? a really good like premise for your company. Like yeah. to have those people who you're allowing to go out and do all these cool things and then hopefully they want to come back and work for you yeah which is cool it's, yeah it's always open you know yeah what do you think about the like vintage community in melbourne right now and like what do you think about all the stores that are coming up and the new instagram uh companies through yeah there's like Hundreds of new vintage companies that pop up for me sort of every day. And and how many personal messages do you get? like um, For, like, advice? Yeah. yeah. I get heaps of it. Like, all these questions that you're sort of answer, asking me right now is, like, what we get. Yeah. Um, another big question that we get is, like, where do you buy your stock from? But I yeah. think, like, with that, it's, like, that's, that's... The most, the biggest question that we yeah, get. Yeah, we get that so much. But it's just, like, it's for the hunt. You know, that, that's the point of this, like, the game yeah. that we're in is, like, you got to hunt for those, those seals, steals or whatever. It's, like, I started thrifting, like, that's where I started from, and that was just all hunting, you know? Yeah. I'd go to, like, f- like 15 op shops a day, and I'd find two things, yeah. you know? But then there are some companies who um, just do that, where they go out and thrift i think uh retro rescuers yeah, they, they're a really really cool company and they find yeah, like well, cool vintage toys mm. yeah and they've, they've not got that many followers yeah but i think they do it really well where yeah. they go out and they there's a few companies like that where retro rescue are the ones that stand out they do a lot of um cool like youtube videos yeah take them on like thrifting adventures and stuff that is cool which is cool it brings me like back to how we first sort of started yeah and with that, like YouTube as well, how do you think that has grown your company? Um, YouTube at the moment is good, like, because no one's on it. So we're just sort of like... Doing the first, it. Yeah, just doing it. Not like, very not a, good at it. Yeah, not very <laughs> good at it. But I think it's just like everything that we do, like me and you. Yep. Like we start a podcast, we haven't even had an intro or something, but we're just like building up to that now. Like we're getting yeah. intros. Um, for our YouTube now, we're like getting a guy to do the graphics for our like intro for that as well so yeah. just stuff like that i think it's just like make sure you get started first mm. that's something that we found really hard as well yeah. just starting a project yeah like i've been on to tyler for about two years for starting a youtube channel yeah. and then we've also had this like podcasting equipment for ages as yeah. well because we were like we we're debating where, where to do it but like because at the warehouse we've run us run sort of out of space yeah and the sort of content room and stuff like that so and it's quite echoing echoey in there yeah. so we brought it to this space yeah. which is nice it's cool and it's a bit different it's like a different um visual if you're watching on youtube yeah it's like and it's good like people like watching the youtube videos instead yeah. of the like spotify or whatever you know we're getting a lot of good feedback from people as well who have come from our youtube to like maybe our instagram or something which has been cool but even what? off the first few episodes of this podcast as well. Like yeah. a lot of people have like... Reached out and said... Like, yeah, give them like honest feedback, which is nice. Like, yeah. it's always good to hear. So would you say that like starting something, um, like even if it's not going to be the best, would you say that that is like a good skill to have or even just to do for starting your company? Yeah. I think for you any got, company? I think you just got to start start doing everything to be honest like yep. nothing's going to be perfect 
you sort of just got to get started. People that wait for perfection end up never doing it, you know. Yeah, was that a quote? And you tried to do it. <laughs> <and you messed laughs> it <up. laughs> um, yeah, like what a quote, guy. What a quote. Oh <laughs> uh, no, nah. yeah, pretty much just start. I think that's what we struggle with as well. Yeah, but our, we sort of struggle with like finding time to do so many YouTubes, like so many things as and, well. And then we have to do it, and then it takes me like a day to edit it. Yeah. So, yeah, finding time. That's probably one of. The it's time, another thing, yeah. yeah. Finding time, like, it's another thing we struggle with. It's like, because now me and you are sort of doing a lot more of this sort of content and stuff like that. Yeah. And it takes a lot more time to edit when you do a lot more, like, video content instead of, like, Instagram feed stuff and all that. Yeah. Um, with your, with, like, Official Vintage starting the company, we talk a lot about, um, like, what you, what to know, what's something, what's, like, something that you and your partner your business partner mm. have both done to create such like a big audience. Um, Tyler just dropped his phone. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't have it on the do not disturb. So it's just <laughs> been like ringing the whole time. <sighs> oh, what an amateur guy. Yeah. So like we, for TikTok and stuff, it's all like entertainment based content. It's not just like oh, product, pro- like it's not just product. Like we're not selling like, oh yeah, buy this t-shirt. It's sort of just like, for a laugh, you know. Yeah, a bit, bit of cringe. Yeah, bit of. We've had the cringiest TikToks before, man. Yeah. Oh, we did one like but we did one a couple of days ago, and it was like actually the cringiest TikTok. It I actually gonna, did really well. It did super well because that fucking cringy. But I was felt so gross. I was like running up and down the street like whoa. <laughs> yeah, but I reckon um yeah what and Instagram's different to that. Or? Yeah, Instagram's different to that. Um, now the reels are coming in. It's pretty cool. Like, we just, like, recycle the TikToks onto the Reels. Yeah. seems to be working, so. Done really well with Reels as well. Yeah. So, it'll be interesting to see where that all goes with the TikTok and the Instagram. Where do you want the content to be in, say, a year or something? Because a year, I think, is a long period of time to, like, change up your content, but. Um, Because I know we've got a lot of projects in the work. Yeah, I probably like want to be like not like not I want to be in front of the camera a lot, but I think I'd be like overused a lot as well, like by then. Probably like a year's time I'd still be in front of the camera, but yeah. I want other people to also be in front of the camera. Yeah. Like, you know, like whether it's you or like hiring other people, you know. Yeah. I don't really want to be in front of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the podcast. Yeah, the other people. I'm whatever, behind you know the I mean? camera. Behind the scenes, true. Behind the scenes. But like have like other people on the content, not just me, you know? Yeah. So it just makes it a bit more interesting and we can have like our own side shows and stuff like that. I think will be a very cool way yeah. to do it. Because like I'm, we'll just be building content will be our main goal in a year's time. I think even having um just more people on the podcast because we plan to have a lot of guests on the podcast yeah like every second week we're going to be doing a guest i reckon yeah is that what we're thinking um maybe not around christmas but but mostly (laughs) because we kind of almost want the melbourne community to know the vintage yeah like everyone in the vintage community yeah even like we'll get a lot of like store owners as well like a lot of people that will come on to the um podcast which will be cool yeah. Like immerse them into some vintage talk and stuff like that. I think having more people from the vintage community, even on the podcast, and then we can introduce hopefully some of um, our newer employees onto yep. like the YouTube videos. I think that will also help uh, grow the content as well. Yeah. I reckon that's like sort of the way we're going to answer your question before. Like that's hopefully where we're going to be in a year's time or whatever, you know? So yeah. who knows what will be happening in five years? Hopefully we'll have a whole like studio of just like content photos, creation. like videos, like yeah, whole sections of places have like rooms for podcasting and stuff. That's the future, future though. Yeah, no, I'm on the same page. That's what I want as well. Yeah, I think that's where I like, want my own office. Yeah, we'll <laughs> <laughs> to edit your own um videos and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. I think that's the way we're sort of going, which is cool. Yeah, like, I, I I agree. Like have a store space and then have like a space where we just make content. And then, like, say me and you and we have our team with us, would be cool. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And, like, Official Vintage is going to be, I think, um, one of the biggest vintage stores in, hopefully, the world. Yeah. But, like, what... you got to dream big as well. The thing is, 
if we dream small, it's like I want everyone to be wearing like clothes from official vintage if you're in America, yeah. Japan, or whatever. I want you to be wearing it, sort of thing. Yeah. Or and even vintage clothes, you know. Yeah. You gotta the dream way it's big. Gone. Gotta dream big. Another advice from yeah. Tyler. Dream big. Dream big, but put in you're the You're not work. that guy, pal. <laughs> 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 I do have one more question. Yep. We'll wrap it up after this one. Yep. Who is someone who has inspired you to uh, start a company or maybe not even start the company, but just inspire you in vintage, just in general, and maybe talk about, like, why they've inspired you or why they push you? Just inspired me? Yeah. So, like, um, even before we started and, like, started going to America, like, we've got, obviously, Sean, Sean Witherspoon. Who's, who is that? Um, he's just... A guy that owns a massive chain of stores in America called Round Two. Yep. Um, they own like seven stores, and that's sort of like where we want to be at. Yep. But yeah, just like the way he did it and the way he like promoted it himself, like got his own shoe with Nike and stuff like that. Wow. Big inspiration, you know. Yep. But definitely like his vintage stores and his like shoe stores would like probably the main inspiration for sort of me. And there's yep. a lot of guys in the community in America and stuff that definitely look up to. With like knowledge and vintage and stuff, like there's also like the Drew Highfoots and stuff from Effers and Frank. He knows yep. a lot of stuff. Like, yeah, you know that sort of thing. So they're your kind of main inspirations. Yeah, inspirations and like friends. No, not friends, but <laughs> not friends, just inspirations. Just inspirations. Fair enough. Hopefully, meet them a few times when they come over or something. Yeah, no, that's cool. Awesome. Cool. Um, yeah, just. To wrap it up, just want to say thanks for coming on, Brooke. But we're going to get um, a guest on next week. He's a good friend of mine, High Tops. He's got a crazy vintage collection. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be dope. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks, guys. See you next week. <laughs>